Welcome back Design Squad and in this actual Noob to Master series video I'm gonna show you how to make a simple uh, zoom in zoom out effect for your images especially when it comes to restricted size of a container around it so here I have an example of a quick sketch mock-up where I have a big image as you can see a bitmap as well as a few options to you know plus and minus to zoom in or zoom out respectively now I showed how to do this sort of in my previous video on mapping but we use different dynamic panels and one state was small one state was medium uh, you know size another state was huge and massive size and now in this one we're going to use just one state of an image and going to and going to stretch that image back and forth to fit our container and i'm going to show you how to do that so let's go ahead and i'm just going to replicate all this jazz in my uh actual file and as you can see right off the bat, it's all quite free flowy. So you can see that I have this image, I have these buttons next to it and all that, but I want really to just isolate it a little bit. So I'm gonna make a dynamic panel out of our zoom options and I'm gonna call it zoom controls or something along those lines. And then I don't need really need anything to be done with an image itself apart from maybe just resizing and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it back like so and let's see this is our container but now I'm gonna have to go ahead and create a dynamic panel out of it just to contain the image inside and so I'm gonna go ahead and say create dynamic panel and call it let's say pick container or something along those lines boom so that's quite simple now I'm going to show you how to do the zoom in zoom out effect and do it really quickly. I'm going to just use a hotspot to overlay that plus sign. I'm also going to go and just add a new interaction to it and on click I'm going to tell it to da -da 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 -da. there should be set size somewhere boom here I found it and just take that image bitmap and now I can scale it as you can see currently it's 600 by 455 and we should anchor it centrally so that it stretches from the center or from the corner and we can maybe say if it's plus maybe we can go ahead and add I don't know another 100 pixels or something like I don't know if it's gonna be consistent we might need to calculate it which I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do so but I just imagine we're gonna just add 100 pixels or so we're gonna do it dynamically by the way in a minute but it's it should do the trick for now and if we preview at the at the basic way at the basic demo if i click as you can see it, it does resize but it resized out of the, our container and here i'm going to show you exactly how how to contain it in, inside so i'm going to go ahead to style and you can see my dynamic panel is selected and i'm just going to go ahead and just unselect fit to content boom and now if I preview it again, you're gonna see that once I zoom in, it contains in that thing. Now, that's about it. You could you could go ahead and just do, you know, with that, and maybe your prototype has only like, you know, two states, zoomed in, zoomed out, maybe that's all you need. But as per usual, we should go deeper and allow users to zoom in as much as we want, maybe 2x, maybe 3x, maybe 1x. You know, why, why to limit ourselves? We can always go crazy of it and, and just allow users to mimic the actual behavior of a natural interface. So what I'm going to do, instead of us just telling it on interactions and click to do this, we can go ahead and define some variables, let's say. Now we can go inside and just note down the size of it. You could also detect it through variables if you want to, but the simplest way is just to say, okay, this is the 637 by 455 are the default size of it that's the minimum size we can allow let's say users to go to but if we want to do more we can always do more and so i'm gonna go back to my statement here we, which i just wanted to resize the image and i'm gonna go ahead and click function key and here i can just delete that as you can see this is for only for the width either add the local variable as i said and say widget bitmap and here i can just say brackets l war one again the syntax here is really important so pause the video check it out i get a lot of questions asking how do you know what to type let's say well you kind of have to get into that rut of using it once you type it and you understand how it works 
that's basically the syntax actor and you know web technology variables are defined as and, and with and as you can see I just basically said the variable is this bitmap and then I can extract out of that let's say um, height or width and here I just want width and it's gonna grab the current width of the of the of the bitmap and if you don't know what to do you can just go ahead and in these variables or function options and just check what you could add next to it which is basically as you can see I have width I had height I had scroll uh, rotation opacity you can extract those options out of that bitmap variable so it builds up like an onion and so I ha I'm gonna extract the current width of a bitmap and I'm also gonna multiply it so I'm just gonna do star let's say uh, 0.5 or something like that so it's gonna multiply by 0.5 it's gonna be a drastic zoom maybe just 0.1 or so and then I'm just gonna close it click OK and do the same exactly with the high 2 so I'm gonna delete that static 555 I'm gonna add a local variable maybe in this case lvar2 widget select again bitmap and again with the same exact as long as you define this variable here at a local state you could also do a global one if you remember how to do it from my previous videos and just say height and then multiply that by again point one was it I don't really recall now that what happens when you talk yeah point one boom and let's try to explore if that actually works so if I add it oh I see what I did as you can see it just it becomes smaller and smaller we basically divided it so we need to say instead of one point point one we need to say one point one because we are multiplying by itself so 110 percent and so forth let me just go ahead and add a one instead of that so we're multiplying by 1.1 of itself and let me see if that actually works boom will you see how smooth that is you can just basically zoom in as far as you want and it's gonna be almost infinite you know the rest is history almost because you could just copy this hotspot paste it in and it's gonna have that same behavior as you can see set size but we want them to zoom out right so we can invert it and here instead of multiplying we can just do that which is basically subtracting and subtracting height as well in the same exact 1.1 and let's see if that works so if I zoom in zoom in zoom in and then zoom out as you can see I now created the zoom in zoom out options and web controls which are pretty neat however now look at this if I start zooming out too much the image is gonna just disappear so that's where the trick is we might if you really want to you can add a condition saying don't go with deep let's say if the image is smaller than I don't know that original size which I noted down then just don't do it right you need to use them global variables and so I'm gonna go to my project global variables and just add a new variable which is gonna be let's say a minimum height or width it doesn't really matter and now every time I click that I'm gonna need to add a new condition and also add like the update to the variable and so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna insert an action set variable value minimum height to value and then here is where I'm gonna add a function and again we you can add the local variable and just select widget uh, that bitmap and use exactly the same conditions and syntaxes from before dot with oh actually this is height sorry but that should be it and now I'm gonna update it and I just need to drag it before so every time I click on it, it's going to first update the, the, the global variable value with the height of the image. And here is the trick, basically, where we can just basically tell it to enable cases and say, hey, if if a value of variable minimum height is greater than value, which is 455, then zoom out. 
If it's not, don't do anything. And, and here's how it gonna look like. As you can see, I'm gonna have this statement. Again, this is for more advanced prototyping. If, if you are not sure what's going on, go back to variables. It's really important to get the basics right before going deeper into these weeds. But this is for those who already know how variables work. That's probably the easiest way. And so and now if we actually preview it, you're gonna see that it sort of works. And I know exactly why, but you can see that it doesn't zoom out because that's the minimum size, but it does zoom in, but it doesn't do anything. And that's because it automatically got stuck about that height. So what we'd really need to do is instead of saying greater than 40, this is totally fine, is to add another case. And just in that n another case, I'm just gonna switch it to if true and just drag that set variable. So it always is updated with every single click we update the height value. And then, let me also toggle that, you're gonna see two ifs. We can then check if the height is, let's say, greater than 455, the minimum size, and then do the rest, which is basically the zoom out option. So let's test that, maybe that works better. You're gonna see that I can't zoom, zoom out, but I can zoom in as much as I want and then I can zoom out to an extent so it does work. And when it stops, I can just click as much as I want. It doesn't do anything. And so we created that condition of basically fixed type of container where we can zoom in, zoom out the image. And I hope it answered some of your questions of how to do that. I see a lot of application in this for especially in desktop prototypes for UX. Again, user test everything. That's the most important bit in any UX effort. And as per usual, if you have any questions, leave down below. I'm gonna try to answer all of them. Share with your friends, subscribe to his channel, give it a like. I'll see you next time.